Hello lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. After the negative review yesterday, you probably think I have even more bad things to say about this show, but no. Actually, this episode was really good. Great, if I wanted to be generous. First off, we finally get to learn what happened to Nick Fury. Because, you know, waiting 10 episodes and having almost no one seriously question what happened to Nick is good writing. <sighs> but I'm giving it a pass. Mostly because of how fun this episode was. Sure, Drake Bell still continues to be my least favorite person to voice Spidey, but at least the writers gave him some lines he could deliver, some of which even managed to be slightly funny. Bonehead, where'd you get your costume? A Halloween discount store? The episode also had the added bonus of giving us a fun team of adventure with Triton, aka Savage Dragon Kid making this honestly first time I think I've heard him even talk. I feel like he was introduced in Season 3's later episodes, which was when I mostly zoned out. If I'm wrong, well, I'm sure someone will love to tell me so. His numerous interactions with Spidey throughout the episode easily made the entire episode for me. If he'd been absent from the episode, this would be at most a decent one. What was interesting was seeing a more serious Spider-Man. I put that in quotes because the show's idea of serious is a bit different than what I'd say is serious. The episode spent quite a bit of time having Triton, a character part of a race called the Inhumans, who apparently aren't very humorous, attempt to get the old Spidey back by quipping himself. No, I do not even enjoy salad. Okay, so I'm not as good at quips as you, but apparently you quit. Even if his jokes weren't funny, it was really their unfunny nature that made them so funny. Oh, and don't get me started on how he refers to Spider-Man as Spitterman. What makes any Marvel show or movie fun are the Easter eggs or cameos of characters and locations that hardcore fans of the comics will recognize. This episode had this with the inclusion of Madam Web. If you've seen Spider-Man, the animated series, you're no doubt familiar with her. Much like in this episode, Webb has the ability to see all possible features and has aided Spider-Man and his extended family numerous times in the comics before her death in Amazing Spider-Man issue 637. Which is why I was a bit puzzled why they utilized the second Madam Webb, Julia Carpenter, instead. It's not a criticism per se, just me pondering the creative decision that led to the recent iteration being used instead. It's not like the Julia version is even that active in the comics as of late. Without getting too into the details, Julia Carpenter was the second Spider-Woman, whose costume design even inspired the look of the symbiote costume that Spidey wore after Secret Wars. She's not referred to as Julia, though, in the episode, instead only be called Madam Web, and having a costume inspired by the original. So I'm wondering if we'll actually get to see a more of Spidey's extended family within the show, either this season or next. Characters like Jessica Drew, Maddie Franklin, or even Anya Corazon. I wouldn't mind coming back to review the show if Season 5 was all about him meeting these characters. I mean, he's already met some of the alternate universe Spider-Man characters. It would be nice to see him meet some of the in-universe Spider-Family characters. Marvel also pulled a deep cut and brought back Meccano, although looking much more Asgardian slash Fear Itself inspired than his original appearance. Before we move back to discussing the events of the show and not just cool little references to the comics, I'd like to point out this moment here. Is that Doc Ock is a good guy? Doubt that's a high probability. For any comic book fans, that's clearly a reference to how Doc Ock eventually became Spider-Man and subsequently a good guy. Now, if that's the rest of this season, or even potentially season five, I could be back on board this show because I definitely want to see me some superior Spider-Man. As I said before I geeked out a little on comic trivia, we are finally reunited with Nick Fury, who has been missing for most of the season. Almost similar to how MCU Fury was also missing, and with an eerily similar reason for running, having to do with Hydra. And a tiny black box. Not a lot is explained, so I'm going to assume we'll return to the Nick subplot later in the season. Which probably isn't much of a good thing, considering it took us this many episodes just to get someone actually looking for Fury. Of course, this is Ultimate Spider-Man, so there is going to be something to criticize, and that's mainly how everyone is acting happy so soon after the supposed death of one of their team members. Hey everyone, Scarlet's dead, but wanna play some volleyball? I'm not expecting the entire episode or episodes to dwell on it and be depressing, but that's just something I had to point out. 
luckily most of the episode was still good, so I guess that makes up for it a little bit, but it's still something that I had to criticize. The comedy in this episode was really on point, and not in an overly slapstick way, or via annoying cutaways, but due to the characters' interactions with each other. This turned out to be a great episode coming off the abysmal previous one. Not necessarily a sign of good things to come, but at least it didn't make me depressed knowing I'd have to write a review on it. Anyway, that's been my review of episode 12 of Ultimate Spider-Man. What did you think of the episode? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Take care.